Hi guys, um, my name is uh, Abra Akta, as uh, kindly introduced. I mean, this uh, tech problem at the at the beginning is uh, it's nothing. I mean, it's more scary when you're demoing to a potential client and your app crashes, then you're really screwed. So, um, so uh, I'm here to talk about really cross-department uh, collaboration in, in startups. So um, let me just tell you a bit about the, the startup. It was mentioned briefly. So what we do is we match, uh, we're basically the Tinder for investors is, the, is the, the kind of the quick way of putting it. So we match uh, startups with investors on a, on, a, on a matchmaking platform where investors, if they're interested in a company, they swipe right. Uh, if they're not interested in a company, they swipe left. So we work with um, VCs, angels. Uh, we've got our first case actually uh, in the Netherlands. So. Uh, how this all came about for me is uh, my background is in London and I met uh, a Dutch founder who had uh, an events company also that used to match startups with investors physically and uh, he did that for about eight years. Uh, so he had a very good network of uh, VCs and angels and he said, okay, you know, I want to take this on online. You know, I can't be doing these events, the guy's traveling around the world doing this and organizing the events all the time. He says, okay, I'm, I'm done with that now. So. So that was the idea. Okay, let's move it onto the app. So I moved over in, um, I moved over August 2017, and we launched the app uh, on the i store on the on the app store in uh, April 2018. And I think it was just two weeks ago that we had our kind of really big success story that um, uh, a founder had l had raised uh, 500k fr euros from our platform from an from an investor. So that was a really good kind of a proof of concept for us uh, at this point. So uh, among other partners, we have some enterprise partners, people like the city of Rotterdam, uh, other accelerators around Amsterdam. So we're really growing in the ecosystem here and then going to, to move over to, to other places. Um, so, so what does our team look like? So as, as head of product, um, we're very lean. When I came in, you know, I came in, there was three of us. We didn't really have any processes. We grew very fast uh, in the first year. And then we were like, okay, now we need to introduce some processes. It's not just myself and two outsourced developers. And that, you know, we have, we have now a whole team. So we have uh, two designers, three front-end developers, two back-end developers, an iOS developer, an Android developer product owner, which is basically me, uh, one data scientist, and some of the team is outsourced in China and some of the team is in-house. So, you know, we're dealing with different time zones, we're dealing with different types of communication, and it's quite a, a large team. And we also got uh, four different platforms. So we've got a WordPress platform, which is just kind of tells you about the business. Then we have an iOS app for the investors and an Android app for the investors, and a web platform for the founders. So, you know, the founders have to go online and create their profile about their business, say kind of what their traction is so far, how much they've done. So they can't really do that on the app. But for the investors, it's about kind of seeing deal flow on the go. You know, a lot of them that we speak to, they spend time going to events, uh, you know, traveling and doing this and that. So for us, it's about kind of deal flow in your pocket. Uh, on a kind of a on a casual way, so it's it's about when we have a team like this is and we kind of create our own processes. You know, we kind of start from what it is that we need, rather than trying to take an existing process that has kind of a lot of jargon. I mean, I read a lot of things. You know, data-driven product manager, or customer value. I mean, to me, it just sounds like buzzwords that make a good kind of diagram in a in a presentation. Right, so I mean, we want to break it down as what exactly do we need from each other? So we have someone who writes the copy for everything that comes onto the platform, someone who does the wireframe, someone who does the design, myself with the with the kind of the management and what's on the product roadmap, someone who's also going to find the bugs. You know, we've got front end developers, we've got back end developers, and every single one of these things is dependent on each other. So. You know, if we don't get the copy, we can't launch the product. If we don't get the designer, developers can't start. If the front end, if the back end guys haven't got the endpoints, then the front end guys can't develop. So, you know, it's like we're starting from this and we've got 10 people and we need to make it all flow. Uh, and th that's basically the challenge that I have and that, that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to fix. So, you know, we had a lot of, you know, we, we've been trying to improve this over the last year because, as I said, we grew really fast. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we had 10 people sitting there and it's like, we need to get them to flow and we need to get, we need to manage them. And how do we do that? So the, the first thing was, was that we need to really establish what our priorities were as a company. So that was, so we split that up into little teams. So you've got the kind of the sales team and you've got the, 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 the product and development team. So every quarter we sit down, well, I sit down with the sales and the CEO, the management and say, 
what are you guys what do you guys want to sell in the next few months to your customers that we don't have right now and you know kind of break that down into the next quarter and say okay this is what we want in the next four months or three months and then we break them down into again into releases so two week releases two week sprint plans and that's where we have everyone who's involved so we need copy from someone in that sprint we need design from someone in that sprint and then we need the development as well so everyone sits in a weekly meeting every so we have the two-week sprint but then we also have a weekly update meeting where everyone sits down and say okay how is it going so far are you on track for delivering this in the in the current sprint and then i also have the same conversation with the management and say you know because we're such a small team everyone needs to be in the loop you know if we say to someone if we say to the sales for example for this client we're going to have this feature ready in two weeks time and then you can go and sell to them they want to know a week before is this on track they don't want to know okay we said you were going to deliver it on this day and now we have a delay they want to know like as soon as there's a delay what's going on so this is the way that we kind of reduce the friction so everyone's in the loop so sales and saying okay what are you guys doing I don't know what you guys are doing you know you guys said this is going to be on this day and now you're coming to us and saying it's going to be late so you know this is how we keep everyone in the loop so everyone knows what's going on in it's a lot of meetings but really it's not it's 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 a daily stand up and a weekly review with with both sides so it, it's not really a lot an hour on each side and to keep everyone in sync and to keep everyone happy it's really worth it even though you know i hate meetings and you know etc we also have kind of like slack updates as soon as someone's added design to to zeppelin and everyone else can go in and review etc etc so so it works like that as well and this is a nice kind of um framework similar to um you know similar to what rory did was you know you start from you start from the design sprint in the first stage you got to say what's the product backlog then you go then you start with getting some wireframes going and then you have some wireframes and then you once you have the wireframes then you can give it to the person who's writing the copy because the person who's writing the copy needs to know what the design looks like because otherwise they don't know how much copy they have to write and how the designer has it in their mind so that's where we go through the whole process so you know you create the sprint uh, and then you have a sprint review you go through that process but you know this is nice in theory um, when it actually comes down to it, it just a lot of it falls apart. So for me, it's it's all about people over process. Um, you know, if you have people that have multiple skills, then you know I like to kind of let them to to take initiative on certain things. So if a front end developer who we trust their skills comes and says, okay, this is the framework that I want to use with my experiences in front end, we say, okay, you go ahead right we'll give you the kind of the autonomy to do that so it's it, it's all about it's all about process so you know if we go back here i mean we've got this whole process of design but if you've got a very good front end developer who has some background in design that turns around and says look you know for this particular feature i can just take the initiative and i can go ahead without design right and we can leave the designer to work on some other things you know because it's just a matter of adding an icon there let's not wait until the designer makes an update and then we come and approve it then we get the copy and then it goes into export etc etc if you've got a front-end developer just get him to make the change and then we can see it on the staging environment and then we can comment on that directly um, so you can't do that all the time but in certain situations you need to know that this is the way to do it and not you know the process is not the king you know you don't want to just go around and get the guy to write the icon just to go through the process just so then you know the designer feels better that you know every the design has gone through him uh you know and it, and it, for, the, for you know for people to do that you know you need to let go of egos as well and it also happens from my side that you know i'm talking to the business on what they want to build but you know if I make a suggestion to them on what we should do, they also need to be open and say, okay, this, this suggestion has come from the product owner, from the, from the head of product, and we think it's a good decision, so we're gonna go with it, rather than the guy who's making the last decision has the final say. So it really comes down to, to dropping egos, you know, and it's all about the best ideas should win and not the people with the titles. So especially when you're in a small team, titles like head of product and CTO and head of UX, they mean nothing because there's only 10 of us. So, you know, you can like make yourself feel better about it, but you know, it's uh, at the end of the day, whoever comes out with the best idea, whether they're someone more junior, then everyone needs to be ready to take that on board. Uh, you know, 
I like to I like to think about it, and I'm going to mention this later. It's you know similar to kind of uh, sports. So I'm a big football fan, and you know at the end of the day, when you have the best players on a team, you know they're going to win the game no matter really who the manager is. Um, and you see that with a lot of statistics, the teams that spend the most money, that have the best people, are going to are going to most times win the game. So really, it's about picking the best people. And you know another point, you know because. Everyone is relying on everyone. So, you know, we always like to say in terms of design, let's keep the design kind of two sprints ahead of what the developers need because so many times you'll be in a situation where the design is late for some reason, they need some more feedback, the developers are sitting there with nothing to do, right? And that's resources going, that's time going, and then you're just like, this process is just not working. So then, okay, stop development for two weeks, get the design ahead of the uh, ahead of the developers and then we can have some kind of you know synergy going and again it's really just down to kind of egos and, and and people and if someone really wants to have control over that process like say me for example if I really just wanted to have the final say on everything I could do but then people will think I'm an idiot and people will think I'm a twat they don't want to work with me after that so you know if someone has a good idea whether it comes from wherever it comes from you just have to be open to it and you know you have to go for it because people will trust you it's all about trust I mean uh, I need to trust that the CTI will make the right call on, on, a, on a tech stack or any kind of uh, other third party service that we want to integrate that we'll say to the developers, okay, you guys have a look at this. And you need to trust that decision. And then the developers also need to trust that, you know, we're making the right decisions on what it is to build, what features are next for our users. And we also need to trust that, you know, the designers are going to produce something that is of value, that's going to be intuitive. So it's all about trust across the whole process. Um, and, you know, when it comes to the best ideas winning, the point is, is that if you can't convince the rest of your team on your concept, the chances are that you won't be able to convince the users either. So, you know, if you've got a concept, if you've got a feature and you pitch it to three of your team members and all of them say no because they don't understand what you're saying, the chances are the user isn't going to understand what you're saying either. So, you know, that's the first point of really validating your idea and, you know, getting it through the team. And, you know, as long as they're open and, you know, when you have something like this, you can always, you always have to kind of watch out for people that are know-it-alls, you know, it's like, Everyone's got an opinion on everything. You know, I can have an opinion on whether that icon should be moved there for design, and I can have an opinion on you know whether we should have this feature, and I can have an opinion on what tech stack we should use, right? But at the end of the day, there's people that are hired with those expertise that you need to give them to. So when we're having like a discussion across the whole team, and there's always one person who's got an answer for everything, who's got a suggestion for everything, you know, you need to watch out for that because. You know, everyone can have an opinion on everything, but it's about what, what is your opinion based on? How much experience do you have to where that, where that opinion comes from? And, you know, especially with these kind of new titles, you know, you've got, you've got so many new titles, product owner, product manager. I call myself a different thing every day, depending on, like, who I'm talking to, you know? Um, so these things are new, and the roles are overlapping as well. So as soon as you start getting hung up over your titles and you know who's doing what, then it just gets it gets really messy. So it's just about what what is the output and how can you all work together to do that. Um, what was it? Yeah, so this is just a kind of a, another sign of, of how to communicate with someone what you want. So for me, I could say to someone, you know, the user must be able to, I really like this example that I read was that, you know, I could say to uh, the designer, right, that uh, a user needs to be able to download a file. And now that's up for the designer, that's my requirement from product. But now it's up to the designer to say, where does that download button go, right, on the platform? Where is it the most intuitive? But then if I say to the designer, hold on, can you add this f download button and can you put it to the right of here? He's not really doing a job. He's just doing what I'm saying to him to do. There's no creative input from him or her. And it's just kind of following all the same way as if I go to the management and I say, what are we going to build? And they say, we're going to build this and this and this. And then I just become basically an admin person who's managing this delivery without any real say so. So, you know, you've got to know what people do and you've got to give them the chance to do that. So here you have the kind of, you know, the roles are overlapping. So. I work really well with, a lot of my conflict comes with kind of the business side, with the management. I work really well with the dev team and the kind of the UX. So we really get along well here. Um, 
a lot of user research wireframes. You know, I speak with a lot of our, our investors. I go and meet them. I also go along with the kind of the head of UX to have these conversations. So we're all understanding what, what is needed. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned sports and I think really this, was, this is what stays in my mind. So, you know, it's, it's, it's people over process. I mean, you can have a great process and I can go today, I can go to Arsenal and follow their training process, but I'm not going to be a professional footballer no matter how much, how great the process is, right? But also on the other side, someone with talent will also fall apart without the process. So like an analogy that I like to see from, from, from the example that I gave, which was, you know, if someone has, someone wants to take the initiative, if someone has the idea, you let them do it. So, for example, you know, a manager can have a tactics of, you know, certain ways that a team should play. But if a player, for example, just takes the ball and dribble past two, three people and scores from 30 yards and hits in the top corner, the manager isn't going to say to them, you didn't follow the process that I said to you. You were supposed to do this, you were supposed to do that. Right, he's going to say, okay, well done. But then if that same player always tries to do that, then the rest of the team are going to turn around to say, okay, look, you did it once, it worked well, now let's follow the process. So it's all, it's, it's, there's a limit and there's, there's a boundary to everything. So you need to let people have the kind of the freedom to go in and express their ideas and have no bad ideas. And if someone has come out, if so for example, if a designer or one of the developers comes up with a feature that's great, you have to consider it and you have to push it through rather than saying, okay, you know, this is the developer and you know, the, you know, the, we're going to do the back, we're going to do the pipeline planning later, we'll let you know. You know, that's the kind of, sometimes you'll have the attitude where someone will say, hey, how about this feature? Oh, we'll discuss it on Wednesday and kind of just kick it into the long grass, you know? But if someone wants to kind of take that initiative, you've got to let the best ideas win and they, also, they always come from the most unexpected places. So, um, you know, the main thing for me is like, you have to maintain integrity when you're doing it. Uh, it's very easy to kind of build clicks when you've got, you know, all of a sudden it was like the programming team was in a little little side and then the management was on a little side and it was it was them against us and et cetera, et cetera. And I was in the middle because I was on a development team and so I was getting it from both sides actually. So, and you can't seem to be like taking sides. So it's all about maintaining your integrity and you know, also taking responsibility because sometimes things go wrong and when you've got so many different players, you can just turn around and blame the other person and say, okay, well, the user experience wasn't great or, you know, the development wasn't great or the design wasn't great. And, but you really have to say, okay, look, this hasn't gone well and let's look at the data and how do we fix that? So, you know, that was, um, that's really the key thing and there's a quote, it's not showing up. Um, But it's, it's again from a, from a football manager. So this is the kind of the analogies that I look to look at. Great manager, Brian Clough. So this is a players lose you games, not tactics. There's so much crap talked about tactics where people who barely know how to win at dominoes. So you can write all the tactics in the world. You can write all the great processes with all the great buzzwords and all the nice diagrams and everything like that. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the right people that can bypass those processes sometimes and get what needs to be done, then uh, you're going to go nowhere. So that's really the main main conclusion is kind of people and work out with those people how they work best and build the process around that rather than coming from uh, you know some nice buzzwords and some nice frameworks and then trying to work backwards. So that's my uh, that's the main conclusion, guys. And uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, Edgar. Yeah. Any questions from the crowd? No, I, I have one. Sure. Um, so you've been mentioning about this collaboration uh, within the team with mm -hmm. uh, UXers, designers, and also engineering. I'm curious, it's always the fact that the project managers are knowing more details and they kind of like have an, uh, like a wider overview, but also like they, can, they know the details. How do you make sure that, that th this information goes from the product managers to, well, designers or to the rest of the team as well? Um. I've, we have, uh, we use this kind of uh, this analytics tool called Kibana and uh, that has a lot of the data that's going on on our product, the usage. So we have like a Tinder style platform, as I mentioned, so you can see when someone's swiping right, when someone's swiping left, how many users are using that. But then it's really all about our kind of our weekly, our team meeting. So every time that there's any kind of update, we have those conversations. So we have a daily scrum with the developers and the designers. So anything that's key, 
you know, there's only a few hours. And because, you know, we work so close together, we're in a small office. Uh, and, uh, you know, we just, it's quite easy to, to, to share information, to be honest, yeah, across us, because we're just working next to each other and we just literally like throw something at the other person and say, hey, have you seen this? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, but yeah, I mean, we do have kind of tools that we all monitor our data from, and then we can, if there's something that is kind of stands out, we can share that stat with other people as well. Thank you.